Twins left here for the Titans. Jarrett in trouble early, goes out of the pocket and takes off and he's able to get a couple yards on the play. It'll bring up third down. Byron Jarrett on the quarterback scramble. And a long eight. Byron Jarrett getting the reps as your number one quarterback here today uh, for the Tritons with DJ Irons out. Jarrett is a 6'3", 240-pound sophomore, guy who has a, a dual skill set, can, can get you in a running game there. And you saw his escapability in the pocket. Third down and six here for the Tritons. Tritons in a tight formation. Looks like they have Chance Gibbons in there, number 22. A tight end. Jarrett in the gun. He hands it off to Brandon Smith. Brandon Smith going to be getting the first down just Brandon barely. Smith carry. So that'll be another first down for the Tritons. Here we see Brandon Smith, you know, physical running back. Uh, about 210 pounds, only about 5'8". Along with Noah Epley making the heavy, stop there. Strong upper body, able to push his way forward for the first down. Puts ball at the other side of the field, first 49 for, for a first the round. Titans at the 46 yard line. God, Jared damn, getting the play God. to his offensive line. He's got Brandon Smith to his right. He's gonna play action. He's gonna roll out of the pocket. He's got a man downfield, Ooh. and that's gonna be incomplete. Almost intercepted by number eight, Alexander Lemon. Kendarius Moses had a beat on it, the 6'2", 200 pound. Uh, defensive back Thompson with the pass break up. A beat on it, just dropped it. The mild coach used to say, Clay, that's why you play defensive back, because you can't catch the football. <laughs> if you could, you'd be a receiver. Yeah, indeed. I'll bring up second down and 10 for the Tritons. Jared going to be under center for the first time during this scrimmage. He's going to hand it off to Brandon Smith, breaks a tackle, but he's got nowhere to go. He's going to be brought down for a little gain on the play. Brandon Smith on a carry. He'll bring up a third and long. Good job of game tackling in there by the defense. Uh, your first team defense, Bryant Barrier, the guy that made the stop there. 6'1", 215-pound sophomore linebacker. Just Wall getting up off the bottom of the pile with the stop for the defense. Make up the wrap up after Smith shed the uh, initial tackle. Like get, like get those, like get that. Like Here's the Jared back in the gun. Third down and 10. He's going to look to pass. Gets out of the pocket. He's got some room. He's going to let one fly down the field. He's got an open man, touchdown. Touchdown to number six, Jace Levi. That's a pass from Brian Jess. Jace Levi. Levi. 54 yard touchdown strike there. We talked about Byron Jett, the guy who really looks comfortable on the run here. So you're going to try to move the pocket, and when they get pressure on him, he's going to escape. He did there, he broke the contain, was able to find a man down the field, uh, Jace Levi, for the touchdown. Yeah, really good job by uh, Jared, able to keep his eyes down the field. He had a little bit of running room, but he decided to throw the ball deep, and Jace Levi was able to complete the catch for the touchdown. They were here to help you out. That's why, like, I, I got. And the, uh, we'll be back here. Yeah, they'll start. So now, um, like, you know, they'll start like, back like, at the 25-yard line. Like, I believe that's where they'll be starting after for, every like, series. And uh, a lot of uh, talent on this Iowa Central team this year. You know, they were kind of a young team last year. You know, not really a lot of experience. They had some experience, um, but especially on the offensive line, um, they had zero returning starters from that team last year. Now. The, they got four returning right. starters this year. And that's a big thing. Continuity on the offensive line is a big thing. Uh, being comfortable playing together on that line. You know, one of the things you see at the Division One level all the time when you watch a TV game is 
how many starts those guys have together. They always make a point of that. Well, there's a reason for that. And also, when you got guys in the second year of your program, they've been through your strength and conditioning program for a year. Uh, and, and this line here should be for us for a big year in the spring. And led by Richard Rodriguez back in that interior guard spot is kind of the standout leader of that bunch. Yep, for, uh, returning a first-team All-American from last year out of Spencer, Iowa. And um, and they also um, not here today, though. They got their all, all, uh, honorable mention All-American ICAC Offensive Player of the Year, DJ Irons, back for this year as well. But he is not here today. Uh, so we'll get to see some more depth at the at the quarterback position and then the running back position. Um, they got it looks some. like we're going to have the ones against the ones again yep. here. Yeah, yeah, they got um, running back depth as well. They got a lot of great running backs as they did last year as well. So this is a pretty well good, really good offense for the Tritons this year, and they're poised for another big year. Andrew Cunningham on the carry there. Ripped off a nice run there. A, a little little loose with the ball out here in terms of ball security, and that's something I'm sure that uh, they'll work on and kind of address. There's Jarrett. The pass is complete to number 15, uh, Jordan Cum, true freshman out of Ankeny, Iowa. Uh, and he's going to have enough for a first down to the 43-yard line. So that'll be a first down for the Triton offense. Bit of a slow start for the Triton defense. Um, offense having their way so far with this defense. Jarrett sends Allendike into motion. Jarrett, another screen pass out to the left side. And he's going to be pushed out of bounds by number 35, C.J. Moore, the transfer from Oklahoma State. And uh, we're and understanding. 35, uh, C.J. Moore, he's a Washington State commit, yep. big time deep. Division one type player here. And he's a guy that they're looking to have a big year uh, when springtime comes in terms of being probably the number one target for DJ Irons. Yeah, you know, um, when you look at the Iowa Central's receivers, a lot of times they have, they don't have, really have Cunningham a lot of. Cunningham's going to take it to the house. Yeah, while I'm talking, while I'm talking, Andrew Cunningham takes it all the way to the house for a Triton touchdown for the offense. And uh, the Triton offense having their way early with this team. I'm a, I'm a little defense. surprised with the uh, big play offense just because usually your first time on the field like this is an offense. You're still getting used to each other and you're getting in sync, getting your rhythm. Uh, so for the offense to be a click in the way it is here today, I think is a positive move in a positive direction. Now, sometimes you might say, is our defense that bad? Uh, I guess we'll kind of find out with that. But but certainly been a lot of rhythm on the offensive end here, and they've been clicking. Yeah, they have. Um, yeah, you know, talking about this offense, um, typically Iowa Central, um, they don't really have a really tall receivers like C.J. Moore. You know, they've yeah. really – had like guys that were uh, maybe well, a little you got a guy that's six foot four, yeah. two ten. You know that's that's a Division one type body. You know yeah. that's why he was a, a highly coveted uh, receiver coming out of high school with a Division one level. Yeah, you know, yeah, they, yeah. Usually when I look at um, the roster for the, the Iowa Central's receivers, you know they're they're a little shorter than average. You know, um, some maybe a little over six foot. Not like a big uh, six four guy like C.J. Moore. So. It'll be a little something different for the Tritons to experiment a little bit with. Also, um, this defense um, also has some uh, nice pieces coming back as well. Um, they got a lot, a lot of great um, depth at the defensive line, a linebacker, and especially um, their, their, their secondary. Um, secondary was very young as well last year. Maybe gave up a few big plays every once in a while, but they are experienced now and they're ready to have a big year as a breakout year. And we'll see if the defense can start to make some adjustments here as well. I mean, you know, you, you've got some guys on that defense that, that logged a lot of snaps last year, so you would uh, expect that they'll start to make some adjustments here uh, as we go forward uh, in the ball game. You know, guys like Rocky Schoenfelter back, you know, uh, who was really instrumental last year. Uh, to the defense, so we'll see how that uh, kind of plays out as we go along here. Yeah, this is, yeah, hopefully, um, they had a lot of experience uh, all around for the entire, uh, for the whole team 
as well. Um, you know, a lot of guys um, were with the team last year and are looking to have a breakout year this year. As I expected, they should be a preseason top 10 team this year, according to. Um, of course, this being, you know, a, an inter-squad game, a, a spring game in the fall, as I like to call it, it's going to be touch only on the quarterback, no hitting the quarterback yep. uh, today. So they're able to, to get hands on uh, number seven there. And I tell you, if I'm a defensive player, I like that because yeah. I'd much, much rather just kind of tag uh, Jarrett than try to bring him down because he's a load back there. Yep, he is. Jarrett has a uh, two running backs in the backfield. Look for the read option. He's going to keep it, but he slips and falls. Um, he maybe gets the three yards on the play. He'll bring up third down and about eight for the offense. Tripped up by Deontay Jones. It's a little bit of a – Jarrett uh, was on the read option there, uh, kind of just slipped up at the – slipped up there. A little bit of a base set. Um, Michael Smith to his to his left, and uh, looks like we might have a free play here, and that ball is going to be incomplete. Good coverage looking, over there. It was looking for number ten, Madison Ridgeway. Good coverage by Kendarius Moses. We've seen him, you know, 6'2", 200 pounds, sophomore, defensive back there. You know, big, rangy corner, and that's what, at the college level, that more teams are going to because of the spread offenses and the vertical routes. You want a guy who's big and rangy at corner now. Uh, it almost kind of changed, the body type of that almost changed in the last five or ten years. You got guys like Moses ten years ago would have been a safety yeah. with his body type and not a corner, but uh, he's done a good job here on the coverage there and he also had a pass break up earlier here in the scrimmage Scott um, looking to um, and the defense yeah. gets a stop there Clay first yep. time today we've seen that so yeah. they're starting to make some adjustments yep. it looks like I believe they're uh, flipping the ball here so they're going to start going the other way um, could be um, we we don't really know. Uh, they're flipping it, so they're gonna. And then a timeout, I believe, might have been taken by the offense as well. So the offense is gonna talk some things over as well. The offense gonna come back out now. So, Jarrett is still in a quarterback for the Tritons. Jarrett going to be under center. He sends Chance Gibbons into motion into a fullback. He hands it up, off to Michael Smith again, and a great carry there. He's going to get about nine yards. It'll bring up second down and about one there for the offense. Andrew Bam Bam Cunningham yeah. running his way forward there. Kind of rumbling, and you know he's been one of the stars here in the early going of this thing after that big touchdown run. And yep. A guy who's really looking to solidify himself at that running back spot. Yeah, uh, Michael, Michael Cunningham, Andrew Cunningham, uh, the transfer out of Georgia Southern. Once again, Gibbons in motion with Jared under center. He does play action. He's under trouble, and he is going to be sacked on the play. Almost stripped out of his hands. But they play. They call the play dead. The so that'll Dave go Middleton as a there. Uh, sack. Outside linebacker coming off of that edge. Nobody picked him up. And, uh, it's a good thing for Byron Jarrett that this is uh, a controlled scrimmage because otherwise uh, he would have laid the wood to him right there. Yeah, that was number 49, uh, Trey Middleton. Jarrett, Jarrett in the gun now. He's got two receivers to his right. He's going to look to pass again. He's looking over the yeah. middle. It's going to be intercepted. Picked off. Picked off by E.J. Perry. Pass is intercepted. Looks like Jarrett was under some pressure there and just That's kind of threw it up there. E.J. Perry yep. over there, freshman defensive back at safety there. 
you know, that we talked about. You know, you look at him, he's 5'11", 195 pounds. And we talked about Kendarius Moses being 6'2", 205. Yep. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, 10 years ago, it would have been the other way around where Moses had been playing safety period, been playing corner. But yep. uh, now with those deep routes, the vertical passing game that the college game has evolved into, yep. you've got to have safeties who are guys that can cover that side of the field and a little more, you know, uh, uh, be able to uh, to run it down a little bit more, a little more mobile. So you use normally smaller guys and then you use rangier corners so you don't get beat over the top on fade routes and stuff like that. Yeah. E.J. Perry is right there. He read that one. Good zone coverage by him. Stayed in his lane and was able to make the read on the play there. And, and a pretty good return uh, to run it back there too. Yeah, uh, really great play there by the defense on their first uh um, I'd say a score of the game. Um, you know, that's their first time they've struck um, here in this uh, fall game, as we'd say. Um, yeah, well, I believe we still have the uh, the ones out here for the Tritons. It might be. Uh, Here comes the Triton offense here. They're back out on the field. And it looks like we're going to have two versus the twos here. As we have a new quarterback in for the Tritons. Oh, and a big hit there by the for the defense. Believe Delonte that was Jones, 6'1", 235 red shirt, sophomore linebacker, yep. bringing the heat right there. Yeah, that, this defense has woken up here. They're awake now yeah. and they're ready to play ball. Yeah, Delonte Jones, he's this is his third year here after a red shirt year. Um, he's been very experienced and knows this defense very well. As we got the twos in, uh, new quarterback now for the Triton offense, uh, number 16, Isaac Michaels. Um, Isaac Michaels out of uh, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, in now for the Tritons. We're going to get a look at a lot of different guys. That's what the spring game's about. Or yep. In this situation, the spring game in the fall, that's what it's about, getting a look at a lot of guys and being able to evaluate. That's what the coaches want to see here. And I, I used to say at the Division One level, the spring game was for the hardcore fans and the coaches, and that's pretty much what it is. Yeah, it is. Michael's in the in the gun. He's got two receivers to his right. Looks like they're going to look to bring some pressure. There's Michael's. His pass going to be incomplete. He was looking for number 31, Damian Magnuson. Pass ball is incomplete. But it's going to be broken up there by the defense. The Michaels is going to have to look the man off there, kind of check off with the eyes at least, because that one was red the whole way and almost picked off as a result of it. And You know, that's something at the high school level that you don't have to do as much of, but when you get to this level of football, that's a big adjustment at the quarterback position is you have to look off the defensive back. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be a long day for you. It'll be a new set of new series now for both the offense, for the offense and defense. We're going to see another offensive possession, and we'll see what group we get here on offense. Looks like the number two group is going to stay in on defense here. Yep. Uh, um, yeah, we're gonna. I think yeah. Now that it is the uh, technically the second quarter, they have a little uh, monitor over there on the offensive side. I've got line. my own 55 here. Terry on Williams, a 6'2", 285 pound defensive tackle here. See what the big man can do in the middle defensively. See if he can get some pressure. Uh, certainly the interior defensive line always a, a focal point here. You want guys who not only can give you gap integrity there and be gap sound in the middle, but also guys who can get that push in, in terms of pass rushing here uh, from that middle and be able to take on the center one to one and take that center out of being able to block into the second level. So we'll see uh, how that works out here. 
Yeah, Terry on William, um, Terry on Williams, a 6'2", 287 uh, from East St. Louis, um, was on the team. He started the first game last year, but went down with a torn ACL, so he had to miss the remainder of the season as Jarrett's pass is incomplete on that last Looking play. Looking for Savion Johnson over there. He, he went up with everything he had on that one, Clay, but, uh, you know, he's a, a smaller receiver, five foot five, 150 pounds, you know, a speedster, uh, what they would call where I come from, a water bug type of receiver. <laughs> guy, you get it to in the slot or on a screen, can take it any time uh, and make a play with it, but not a guy that's going to go up and high point the football that much, but did what, did what he could try to climb the ladder there. Yep. Jarrett under center here. He's going to send Gibbons into motion back into the fullback, and he's going to hand off the ball to number 20, Dalen, Bo Dalen Bodie from Bloomington, Illinois. Um, and he's, gonna, he's not going to get Noah much Epley on the play. in there, linebacker for him out of the inside linebacker spot, was able to get pressure in there, came untouched, able to make the hit, and then uh, one of the safeties came in there as well, 29, was able to come in there. Christian Hill, he came flying in as the second man. Yep. Third down and 12 here for the for the offense here. As Michael sends. Kind of a bunch formation here. Yeah. It's now Jarrett in a quarterback. Uh, Jarrett. Off the rails, he's got a wide open got receiver. Number two, Savion Johnson, and that's going to be a touchdown. Byron Jarrett doing it once again out of the pocket, and that's his second touchdown pass of this game. About a 67-yard touchdown pass from Jarrett to Johnson. Again, we see that Byron Jarrett is a lot more comfortable throwing on the run than he is standing in the pocket there. He's able to roll out and find Savion Johnson. And we talked about, uh, you know, Johnson being a speedster, you yep. know, being a smaller receiver. Uh, reminds you a lot of Tenarius Aiken yep. from last year's yeah, squad. Yep. And I think he's going to probably take that role on that Tenarius had last yep. year. Yeah, a great throw there by Byron Jarrett. Um, He's a really good uh, quarterback, you know, especially with his size, 6'3", 240, and being able to move like that is incredible. Um, definitely uh, uh, some of them scouts are going to be looking at him as a really threat in the as at their quarterback spot. So the Triton offense comes back out once again. It is Byron Jarrett at quarterback. He's got a... He's got two. He's got two backs in the backfield. He's got two receivers to his left. Jarrett's gonna keep it himself, and he's gonna be stopped behind the line of scrimmage, and he's gonna lose three or four yards on that uh, on that play. Malik Adams on the tackle. Malik Adams, another returner for this. Malik Chuck Adams Eden. able to make that tackle right there, and he's a guy that you know was a heavy contributor, played a lot last year on this defense. A guy they're looking to be a, a leader of this defense. Yep. Here's Jarrett. He's looking to pass. He's all. He's gonna have nowhere to go. He's gonna let one fly. He might have a man, and it's gonna be incomplete. A great pass, though. Great effort, though. He was looking for number 13, Anneli McKenzie. But that's going to fall incomplete into double Just coverage. underthrown a little bit right there. Yep. Otherwise, that's probably a reservation for six. But uh, pretty good job of getting back there on the defensive coverage. They did have a man there. Just underthrew it a little bit. Yeah, also good coverage, though, by the, uh, by the Triton defense. So it will be third down and a 13 on the for the Tritons. Jarrett going to send Allendike into motion. Jarrett under center. And he's going to go play action. Pass is going to be complete. We see C.J. Moore again over there. You have complete to C.J. Moore, and he's not going to get very much. much. And, uh, and there's a flag down on the play. 
and it's going to be. I have be, a feeling you're going to see be, more of more and not less of more uh, as the season progresses here. I think he's going to be a big time playmaker for this offense. I mean, they certainly, you know, when DJ Irons is back, he's not here today. When he gets back, you've got your your quarterback who was the conference player of the year, offensive player of the year last year, uh, and you add guys like C.J. Moore, Savion Johnson, Bam Bam Cunningham in the running game. You know, you've got weapons around him, and, and that's the thing that I came out here wanting to see what these new weapons look like. I, I think we all know what we have in D.J. Irons. I, I'm not that worried about seeing him. Yep. I want to see what some of the new weapons look like, and I want to see what some of the backup guys at quarterback uh, do here. And Byron Jarrett's look good because we saw where last year D.J. missed some time with injury, and, and as they say in the NFL, you're only as good as your backup quarterback, and that's the truth at the college yeah. level too. So uh, I, I feel good about uh, the number two quarterback spot uh, with Byron Jarrett once D.J. Yeah. gets back too. Yeah, um, yeah, so far a great showing by the offense and the defense starting to get up there as well, um, making a couple of big plays as well, especially on that last series. Byron Jarrett in the gun. He's got he's got a base set here. He kind of bobbles the snap a little bit, and he's able to give it off to number nine, Jaden Washington, and he's going to have three yards. Jaden Washington, uh, Clay, one of the few guys that, uh, in terms of uh, playmaking position, skill position, guys, that's back uh, for this offense coming yep. into the spring. Yeah, Jaden Washington. Uh, he came on very late in the season last year. Um, very contributed uh, very well, and especially got a few good carries in the graphic edge bowl. Jared on the scramble. Jared on the scramble. Byron Jared again there, uh, able to avoid the rush. So it'll bring up third down and three here for the offense. Jarrett going to be in the gun here. They're going to have a little bit of a bunch formation to the right. Allendike will be the tight end to the left. They send a man in motion. They hand the ball off, and Jaden Washington is going to have a first down for the offense. Jaden Washington on the carry. This is the first series we've seen Jaden Washington after seeing uh, Bam Bam Cunningham at running back. And uh, we also saw another running back in there as well uh, earlier here. Uh, so Brandon Smith was the other one. So we've seen three backs now, and all these guys going to get a chance to impress the coaching staff. Byron Jarrett is going to be under center. Um, we didn't see uh, the Tritons last year. Um, they weren't under center uh, a lot last year, so – a little bit of a mix, a little bit of a mix up here for the Tritons, trying to try some new things here in this game. As the handoff goes back to Jaden Washington, he's gonna get a, maybe a couple yards on the play. He'll bring up second down and eight for the offense. Jaden Washington brought down by Deontay They're gonna get some personnel in here. Byron Jarrett's going to be the lone man in the backfield. He'll have they'll have an empty formation. Three receivers to the right. Sends a man in motion. He sends Jace Levi. Jarrett, he's got the swing over to Levi. Levi going to make a move and he's going to have a first down for the Tritons. Screen pass complete. I like that play there. You bring a man in motion. It's harder for the defense to account for him like that. He runs that kind of flare route out there, and they had it. And to be honest, I thought Byron held it probably a second too long yeah. because I think uh, he had a little more room to leave by out there. But yeah. uh, a nice route, nice play call there. Yep, back, They're going to be back in empty once again. Um, they're going to send another man in motion, and they're going to run at the same play to Levi. And he this time, yeah, though, he's going to be tackle. tripped up. C.J. Christian out of the defensive back spot there, red shirt freshman out there in space. And that's what you have to have, especially at college level now where everything is so spread out with your offenses and you're talking about 
four and five wides. You got to have guys in the secondary who can tackle in space, and CJ Christian showing an example of that. It'll be second down and a loss of four on the play, so it'll be second down and 14 for the Tritons as Byron Jarrett. Byron Jarrett going to be under center. He's going to send Chance Gibbons into motion into the fullback position, and then he's going to go play action. He's under some pressure. He's going to look for the end zone, and he was looking for C.J. Moore, but it's going to be incomplete, broken up by number four, C.J. Christian. Bring up third down and 14 now for the Tritons as so they're going to send in some substitutions in. Levi going to come in for Gibbons. Jared going to be in the gun, a base formation here, spread basic spread formation here for the Tritons. Jared going to take the snap, a little bit of a QB draw, yep. and he's going to be tagged at about uh, somebody got at the line of scrimmage. Design, draw there, pretty well executed. Tag, yeah, D, uh, Jared going to be tagged at about the 35-yard line. So he'll bring up, he'll bring up fourth down and about eight. Triton's, the offense going to go for it here. Uh, Tritons here trying to um, figure out the personnel. Um, they're going to go trips right here. Jarrett going to be the lone man in the backfield in an empty formation. He's going to send a man in motion. Jarrett going to throw the ball. He's under pressure, and he's able to complete the pass, but it's not going to be good enough for a first down, so it'll be turnover on downs as the defense uh, holds the offense. Pass was caught by Savion Johnson, brought down right away. Savion Johnson with the catch for the for the offense and then Kingston McKinstry, uh, another one of those returning uh, sec, uh, members of the secondary from last year uh, with the tackle for the defense. And it looks like the cheerleading department down there has procured some bug spray. Down here, Clay. Yeah, well, they should, they I would like to know where they got that from because yeah. uh, definitely been something we've been dealing with up here, uh, <laughs> and really everybody in this section of the stadium really has been dealing with. Uh, and I don't know where all this came from unless it's just the warm weather. Yeah, I think it's the warm weather, <laughs> and you know they should those, those cheerleaders, you know, they should send some of that bug spray up here <laughs> as the back here. Um, here as the defense gets the stop on with a turnover on downs. Um, you got a little bit of a stoppage in play here. Of course, uh, springtime season, Triton's coming off seven and six last year. That doesn't tell the exact story, though, because that uh, seven and six was against one of the toughest schedules in Juco football. Yeah. Uh, when you talk about six teams, seven teams out of uh, that Jayhawk conference. And, yeah. Of course, the Tritons able to win the ICAC title first time ever and then win the bowl game under Coach Von Talto. So they have some momentum going into this spring season. Yeah, this yeah, seven and six doesn't really reflect the record from last year. You know, every every game they played in last year was against a ranked opponent. Here we go as Byron Jarrett hands it off to Brandon Smith. And he's gonna be have a first down for the offense. And you know, a different dynamic this year with Football going to be in the spring uh, coming up. It's going to be a totally different dynamic. These guys have been working out in the fall. And it also gives the coaches a chance with high school football playing in the fall to go see a lot of high school players in the state here. Uh, so that should give them a leg up and been able to recruit. If I, if I know Jesse Montalto and his staff, they've been on the road probably every Friday out to see uh, players around the state of Iowa. And yeah. you don't have to go too far to see some guys who could certainly help you. Yeah, then, you know, thinking beyond it for next year, after this spring season, then they're going to have to jump right back into it at, in, if the fall of the next year. 
So, you know, it's going to be a wear and tear for this football team here in the next year or two. Here's Barry and Jared oh, off the play action. action. He finds a man, but it is dropped by Savion Johnson. That would have been an incredible catch, but he just dropped it. Yeah, it was a tough throw there for Savion to get right at his fingertips. Of course, uh, the old adage, you know, if you get your hands on it, you can catch it uh, there. But uh, kind of one that turned him around a little bit. But a good play action fake to set up the pass. It'll be third down here now for the offense. Third down and 11. As Jarrett as Jared in the gun. He's got Smith to his left. Looking the, the looks like the offense is changing up the play here. Jarrett gonna take the snap. Looking for a receiver, he finds one, but it, he is, he falls down and the pass is complete. Number 82, Andrew Saunders. And he had some room to run, just slipped. Feet slipped out from under him over there. Yep. And, of we course, you know, there was a high school football game here last night, too. So sometimes that turf can get tread, you know, some tread to it. And you yep. can have a hard time getting the kind of traction you need here uh, when you're playing right after in that situation. Yeah, that, that was fourth down, so we'll have a turnover on downs for the defense. Well, and defensive stop again here. We, we've seen the defense start to make some adjustments now uh, to the offense, and the offense kind of slow things down a little bit here uh, so because they really opened up high, and the defense is playing catch up, but now they've made some adjustments and settled in. Triton offense will start from their own 40-yard line when they return to play. Looks like now we're gonna see some more backups into the game as well. As it looks like now number 18, Zach Marker, the true freshman from, from Norwalk, Iowa is in the game. As he completes his first pass first to pass Jordan Cum. By Jordan, Jordan Cum was a member of the Ankeny State Championship basketball team last year. Guys saw up close and personal, and I tell you, a really good athlete here, Clay. A guy that could work his way into the rotation uh, because he could straight up run and, and jump, and he's a guy with a lot of athleticism, could help him at receiver. Zach Marker in the gun. He's got three receivers to his left. Takes the ball, he finds a wide open man, number 17, Cal Woodman. And that'll be Good a first read down. Good by uh, Marker there, picking up the pressure, finding the man, running that little uh, slant route across the middle, gets rid of it. Delonte Jones on the tackle there for the Triton defense. Marker hands it off to Alex Gully, and he gets a couple yards on that play. He'll bring up second down for the Triton offense. And off was Alex Gully. Marker in the gun once again. Oh, and the pass is incomplete, just under just below the hands of Jordan Come. He was looking for Jordan Come there, and, and they had him, too. Yep. You know, he was wide open right there around the slant. So uh, this defense here, uh, you know, is now going to have to make some adjustments to how the offense is used in the middle of the field here uh, because they certainly are doing a good job of it. Third down here for the Tritons. Here's Marker. They're looking to change up the play. As Marker is in the gun in a spread formation. Marker under pressure early, and he is going to be brought down yeah, in the back. Say he got a hand on him. He did a pretty good job of avoiding the rush there. Marker brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Dylan Kane awarded the sack there for the defense. Dylan Kane on the sack.
Okay. Hey, I just killed you guys for a second here. Sorry. Um, I'm going to send him down to the sideline with this. He's going to uh, try and get an interview and stuff. So just, but he can't hear you. You'll be able to hear him, but he won't be able to hear you. Okay. Um, if you can't hear him, just go. We got, we've got technical difficulties. We'll get him fixed. Okay. Oh, a great hit there. Number one, Kingston McKinstry laying the wood, blowing that play up there in the second there. Yeah, he did. Uh, yeah, he did. And that's going to bring up the uh, fourth down for the offense. It's so confusing. Yep. When you're ready. Nah, actually, that was fourth down, so it'll be a turnover on downs for, for the with that defensive stop for the Tritons. Another defensive stop here. Yep. We've seen the defense start to kind of dig in here. and uh, They did have a little trouble with that over the middle slant route there, but uh, something that they'll uh, adjust to. They're doing a Levi. tremendous job now. Uh, uh, keep running your camera the same thing, but you're also, but we're going to do the side of the they had so earlier me, okay? in the ball game. Defense uh, yeah, started out struggling and then now they're starting to really turn it on. The ball will be placed at uh, midfield. The ball will be placed at midfield for the try <laughs> on the offense. here looking for a little more momentum they had a, a great start to this game but now uh, kind of struggling here coming out of the coming out of the last few series so it's been dominated by the defense and looking to make some now offense looking to make adjustments after the defense made yeah. so. of course we've got our sideline man Casey Miners working with us today too let's go down the sideline get a report from him Casey hey welcome here I'm on the sideline here my name is Casey uh, uh, Pee Wee, uh, the quarterback in today, as Demarcus isn't uh, able to be here today, looking really good, throwing a nice couple, but a nice ball there in that first quarter. Let's look to see if he can still do good and stuff like that. But still, the offense, as you can see, as we're sitting right here, first team offense back out on the field right now as we get ready to start this second half of the scrimmage. Good report there from Casey. Jared on the keeper. From him down here on the field. Deontay Jones with the stop. Going on at the field level here. And you know, he and I got a chance to, to work together yeah, last night to uh, say yeah, that it should be. football right here at Dr. Stadium. I, I feel like I live at this place uh, this time of year here. Today. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you know, football season, you know, you always have one field. You know, it's always your home. You can't wait to go home to it. And a tremendous, tremendous uh, atmosphere and facility this is right here in Fort Dodge. There's Byron Jerry. Yeah, probably. Got a follow on the field. Yeah, and the offense seems Three to be recovered by the offense. It's spring ball. Yeah, that's it's, all you can say is it's spring ball. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. ball ball yeah. this year. The though. coaches would be upset if this wasn't spring ball. Yeah. Right? Four guys got a handle on the ball and nobody could secure it. Yep. Yeah, you know, that was a. You're watching on Triton Mason Network and remember, you know, it's, it's early in the season. We won't play a game until March. We've got plenty of time uh, for that. That was looking a little bit like a comedy routine by the time the offense got it back. Here's Byron Jarrett. Throws over the middle, and that pass almost could have been intercepted. It was broken up by number pass nine. Pass intended for Morris. Incomplete. You know, Cross was... A big part of that secondary started at that safety position last year. He's going to be counted on here this year as well. Yeah, Stanley as Cross. A key contributor in that position. Yeah, Stanley Cross, I, I think last year, I think he was the best uh, corner that the Tritons had last year. And uh, he's got some early offers as well from some big time schools. Here's Byron Jarrett handed off to Cunningham, and Andrew Cunningham's going to have nowhere to go 
And he's going to be brought down there for a loss on the play. Beats a red shirt fresh with six foot, 225 pound defensive end. Kind of a speed rusher, but playing the gap there real well and able to stand up against the run. If he can do that, he can become an every down defensive lineman for this defense. Higher Jet in an empty formation. Nobody in the backfield. And they're going to get a timeout. Yeah, you know, a lot of, it looked like a lot of confusion there for the offense. So now they're going to, to, time, they're going to take a timeout here and discuss, discuss what's going on. Yeah, once again, you can't ask for a more beautiful day uh, for football. Um, I can't remember a day, a football weekend, where, you know, it's about 80 degrees yeah, it's for, uh, it's for their here in Iowa so in October. Um, you know, usually we're used to 60-degree weather, seven, maybe low 70s, but, you know, we don't, we haven't gotten up to 80s in a long time here in October for a football game here in, here in the state of Iowa. Both teams talking things over. Um, defense looking to. I cannot hear the drum. Um, defense looking to continue the dominance. Offense still looking to find their uh, uh, looking to find their stride from when they had the start of the year. As to how they want to cover this formation. Jarrett in an empty formation for the Tritons. It'll be third down, and uh, we have a flag down. It looks like it's going to be a false start yeah. on the Triton offense. And motion penalty on the right side of the offensive line there. Hey, procedure against the offense with five yard mark off. So now that's going to back him up five yards. It's going to be third and 17 now for the offense. Up. Here's Jarrett in the empty. He's going to take off on the quarterback draw. He's got some room to run. He goes right up the middle. Did not get touched. And he's still going, and he's going to get across. They're going to mark him down at the quarterback keeper. Oh, you see you have the about the fact Jarrett. Good I mean, I mean, you talk about a, a guy who it's 230 pounds of quarterback. Yeah, hey, we so can't interview this guy right here. He does. I'll tell you if I hear a defensive back, you're glad that all you got to do is touch him and you don't have to get in front of him when he's in the open field. So he's got the straight frame going down here in that situation there. Yeah. On a 180 pound defensive back, I'm saying, okay, let me just let me just get hands on him. That'd be good for today. Here's Jared back in the gun. He's going to look the pass once again. Finds a man, and there's C.J. Moore, and he's going to get out of bounds for a gain of seven. Pass C.J. Moore. Brought down, and he will go out of bounds at about the 13-yard line. Second down and three. And something I like that C.J. Moore does, and, and you see big-time players oh. do this at the D1 and the pro level, is uh, when, when there's nothing out in front of you, uh, no room to run there, and you're on the sideline, go ahead and go out of bounds. Yeah. And preserve that punishment that you're going to take for later on because you're going to take some of it. Be smart about how you initiate contact. Andrew Cunningham on the carry. Andrew Cunningham on the carry. Looks like he's going to maybe get a yard on the play. He'll bring a third down and a long one yard before the Triton offense. Triton offense. Sub some guys out here. Yeah, and then Cunningham gets the ball and he's going to Get across, and it'll be a first down for the offense. It's a handoff to Cunningham. Good. 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 with the tackle. In a steady die to Bam Bam Cunningham now. He's the running back position. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Cunningham, the transfer from Georgia Southern, uh, looked to make a 
immediate, immediate impact here for, for this Triton offense. Jared's got two running backs in the backfield. Got a couple of receivers to his right. Jarrett gonna hand it off to Washington. Play it. Oh yeah, play action. He was looking for number 13. Jared's pass incomplete. Handed for uh, McKenzie. Jared had that play too as well. Yeah. That's what was doing there. Jarrett gave the nice little fake like he was gonna cut it up on the inside, keep it himself. Which Drew the defensive back to him, so he did open it up for Onik McKenzie there, uh, but they are unable to kind of hook up with that one. And that's one that, that you might want back because it's one that really you could execute. Here's Jarrett again. He's going to hand it off to Washington. Washington going to be stuffed, though. He maybe got a couple of yards. Washington on a carry. Brought down by Monte Jones. CJ Moore, I'd be a little bit surprised. He's going to be a man down on the defensive players. And we have man down here um, for the defense. And you know, uh, could be a case of cramping here because, you know, you've got an unseasonably warm day, yep. you know, and, and kind of Time a out. day here. Monte Jones uh, nicked up on the play. Cramping. We, we saw it here last night uh, in the uh, the St. Evan High School game over here last night too. So uh, it could be that. Hopefully it's just that. Yep, he is up already. Um, just looked like a little a bit of a cramp maybe. Um, just down for a few seconds, but able to get back up. Uh, that was number 11, Delonte Jones. Good job by our training staff here, or that guy. Second and fourth by conduct penalty called on the Triton defense. Split him out a little further and throw it more toward the corner because you have to throw to his back shoulder to where he's the only guy can get it. Uh, that one underthrown and he's had very good job of finding the ladder to go get it. Yeah, yeah and then um, they're going to rule the, the interception out of bounds so the interception will not count. And then uh, I believe there was a unsportsmanlike uh, conduct penalty on the defense. So I they'll be. going to say it was incomplete if Perry was probably out of bounds. Yep. Incomplete out of bounds of that last He's off the game, Washington. An unsportsmanlike penalty on the, the, defense, on the defense would result in half the distance to the goal. Well, and this is what we do know that EJ Perry was fired up about that play. Yeah. He thought he made the interception. Yeah. He took the ball and, and threw the ball. Stop me by Dylan Kane. Yeah, he did. Uh, yeah, and then he's going to get unsportsmanlike called for that. So that he get a new fresh set of downs for the offense. Second, it's now second and goal from the one yard line. Play action of Boule for Jerry. He's going to look for the end zone and the pass is going to be incomplete. 
pass is incomplete, intended for Olandyke. He's looking for the big tight end, Clayton Olandyke. Clayton Olandyke uh, played uh, early on in this. He played the first game of the season. Holy shit. Uh, you know, pretty well designed bootleg play, and I thought, you know, yeah, was it thrown low, but it had to be thrown low because of that coverage. I, I think it's a play that could make there uh, a catchable play, catchable yeah. ball. Yeah, the pass intended for Clayton Holland, like, uh, another guy who missed uh, most of last season uh, with a knee injury. Um, he got hurt after that first game and uh, just missed rolls last year. And now he's looking to have a big one this year in the breakout season. Three pass to for the touchdown. The Tritons are going to get a touchdown here. Um, to Jace Levi, number six. Now, technically, that goes down as a touchdown run, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, they call it a touchdown pass on the PA, but it's a backwards pass. Therefore, it's a run. It, it, same thing as a lateral, like in the option run game. Uh, but a good job there. We, we've seen that play, that little flare play, where they send Levi in motion, and they throw to the outside. They are coming through. And, uh, that's a nice little play, and that's something I hope we'll see them incorporate more throughout the day. If you the defense, somebody in that linebacking core has got to pick that up, and they've got to talk up there. Because somebody's got to go out there and pick up that flat. Otherwise, uh, Chase Levi's Levi, they're taking a little break here. So I might see if they have a single out game. Uh, two Same touchdowns down your day so far. And it looks like we're going to have a halftime break here, here in the fall game. And but so everybody can get hydrated, uh, the referees get hydrated, and the uh, players get hydrated. So we'll go back down to the sideline. Hey guys, uh, welcome back down here. I'm on the defensive side of the sideline here, and uh, on that last uh, personal foul, though, and I'm, I'm was really living with his defense, but it seems he got him calmed down. But you also have to like the way that the offense is looking right now without the number one quarterback in there, uh, with DJ not here today. Uh, as you see on the swing pass they just scored in this, in this close end zone to me, uh, you got to like the way the first team offense is getting, the offensive line is getting a great push off the ball, especially with a bunch of scouts here tonight watching the game. This is the only scrimmage uh, that is going on within the Iowa schools that play Juco today. So back up to you guys up there the, at the box. Of course, we'll see now they're going to kind of bury it up here. So this thing's going to start to wind down a little bit at this point, I think. We're going to see the special teams out here kicking the ball. Why did you call it for that? We should be here at about 4 o'clock. Right. It's about that time. So uh, we'll see how that works. Let's, let's look and see what's going on in the world of Division One college football right. here, Clay. I know a lot going yeah. on today. Of course, so Texas Tech get uh, in action uh, against up. Iowa State yep. for the home Hometown Cyclone coming off the of big win uh, as well. Or whatever. And, uh, last week against uh, Oklahoma, first time they beat them in Ames in six years. Yep. Yeah, uh, really surprising win, you know. Um, Oklahoma played really well that game. Uh, just yeah. couldn't, like, Spencer Rattler had an unbelievable game, but, you know, they just made some mistakes down the stretch. You know, some things, they shot themselves in the foot at some points during the game. Definitely could have won that game, but, you know, just didn't come out that way. I don't know why, but my app is not updating here as to the actual scores for the day. I'm going to see if I, I have it right here on my phone here, Rob. Um, scores, Iowa State leads 21-7 in okay. the second quarter. Three minutes and ten seconds. You know, and after that emotion here last week, you know, you got to avoid the letdown with Texas Tech. Because they're better than Texas Tech. They just can't have that emotional letdown. Here. And then um, here's the big score here, Rob. You'll like this one. Oklahoma 53-45 to over Texas in and quadruple overtime. I see where uh, Tennessee and Georgia tied at 14 yep. in the second quarter. Big battle uh, down home for me, you know, yep. guys that uh, uh, territory that I'm familiar with, guys I'm familiar with. But Tennessee looking to prove they're legit, man, and they can do that uh, depending on how they look against Georgia. Yeah, um, yeah, Tennessee is the team that could uh, really make some noise this year um, as well. Georgia coming off a big win over Auburn as well. Uh, last week in a, a complete blowout win. Uh, how about this? Auburn and Arkansas today. A couple of former Tritons going against each other. Yeah. Myron Cunningham at tackle for Arkansas Razorbacks. For instrumental. Played good in that win against Mississippi State that upset last week. And uh, Marquise Burks playing defensive line at Auburn. I was flipping around the uh, channels uh, last Saturday. And Georgia and Auburn's on. Of course, that's a, a big game where I come from. And the South's longest running rivalry. So I'm going to look at it a minute. 
and, and I'm looking and I'm watching the game and Marquise Burks makes a tackle and they call his name. I think, and I'm like, a, I think they're not all bad. He was right here at Iowa Central last yeah. year. So that tells you the kind of the caliber uh, of the guys that Coach Montalto and his staff are able to get here. Uh, tremendous athletes and guys that are going to go no, on to have last, Division I One uh, type careers. I think six guys that are former Tritons right now in uh, Division One right. programs. Yeah, and then of course the the biggest game of the day, um, Oklahoma uh, defeated Texas uh, in quadruple overtime, 53 to 45. That must have been an unbelievable game to watch. You know, the Red River rivalry, always a great game every year, year in year out. And then um, also um, Texas A&M getting the upset over Florida, 41-38. Uh, and people were looking at Florida with Kyle Trask as a potential uh, Heisman Trophy candidate after the season. He's the last time you really remember Florida giving up 40 points in the game. Oh, yeah. Characteristic for them. A uh, big bounce back win for A&M after Alabama handled him last yeah. week. And uh, then, uh, so that's a big bounce back. Uh, for North Carolina, 56-45 over Virginia Tech. Uh, tonight, a, uh, a Missouri with an upset over to LSU. Yep. Coach Ogeron uh, has already lost two games uh, yep. in the early going of the season here. Uh, so, could be rough sled in there. And, and, and I'll tell you, they, they lost so much personnel, not yep. only from the talent standpoint of guys that went in the NFL, but guys that they expected to be big players for them this year and standouts uh, that opted like out uh, for the yeah, NFL yeah. draft, guys like uh, Tyler Sheldon and uh, uh, Jamar Chase. And yep. also, you know, you had the defensive coordinator, Dave Aranda, left uh, and went to Baylor. He's the head coach. And then Joe Brady, uh, who was kind of their passing game guru, uh, was really instrumental in what they did offensively. He's gone, too. So complete rebuild. And they're having a little trouble with it. And, uh, you know, big game tonight. The nation will be watching. Uh, my hometown, uh, Clemson, South Carolina, the Tigers in Death Valley tonight uh, against the Miami Hurricanes. And we're going to find out real quick here tonight if Miami, if the view is back, we'll find out. They look good in two games this year, but uh, it's a different thing to go into Death Valley and beat Clemson. Yeah, Miami, one of the best defenses in the country, going up against uh, one of the best NFL uh, prospects, Trevor Lawrence, having another uh, spectacular year, um, especially with all the skilled players he has back and just the overall team he has um, with Dabo Sweeney. Um, this is going to be, a, yeah, Clemson right now, I looked at the spread. It was about a 15-point spread. Clemson's favored by 15. That's going to be a lot closer than that, I think. And, and very well could be. You know, we'll, I guess we'll find out. Uh, there, I, I tend to think that it'll be somewhere around 10 or 10 or 13 points, somewhere around there. Uh, Weather could play a factor. It's supposed to be rainy and sloppy down there. Oh, wow. It could kind of change. Something. Yeah, that could be a big uh, challenge for both teams as we get back to action here there at Dodger Stadium. As the offense back up there, we got number 16, Isaac Michaels, in at quarterback as he hands the ball off to number 32. Number Jace Weidman. Jace Weidman. Just wait a minute, I'll carry. It's the first time we've seen him today. You are know, Epi with the tackle. Here's the pass complete to number 80. Two pass complete. There's a county marker on the play. Number 80, Mark Masters. And there's a flag Mark down Masters on the catch. play. It'll be on the defense, so. Offside is declined. No, the, it'll be offsides on the defense. And they'll beat the client, they'll make it first down. For the, for, the for, the for, the for the train offense. There's Michaels. Gives it over to Weidman. Weidman not going to get much. Therefore, the Triton offense. Of course, uh, Isaac Michaels back in at quarterback, number 16, for the offense here. Michaels in the gun. Looks to throw. He, guys, he had a man. It's going to be incomplete. He was looking for Jordan Cum on the play. Yeah. 
It'll bring up third down. Like the pass the tree to tell the turn. And throw it kind of behind him, too. It's one thing to kind of throw it too tall and give him a chance to go get it. There's another thing to throw it kind of behind him too tall. That's a really hard play to make. Yeah, indeed. Um, Michael's going to be under center. I... Under center, he's going to hand the ball off, and there's going to be nowhere to run as number 28, uh, Miles Guy has nowhere to run. And he'll bring up fourth down. Miles down carry. Put out for a loss by Jonathan Massman. Delonte Jones is in there, number 11. That's a guy at linebacker, that, inside linebacker that uh, really uh, was another guy that was a heavy contributor to the defense and a guy that you got to figure is going to be uh, kind of in that position this year as well. offense back on the field after the turnover on downs. Another stop by the defense. Isaac Michaels, Zach Marker in there. He has a little trouble with the snap and he's able to throw it away. Pass incomplete. Right there. With good pressure by 49, Trey Middleton. We called his name a few times there. Yeah, he had get some pressure, get after. Yeah, he had a little trouble there with the snap. It looked like he was Lawrence almost Lillard went over his head. Putting the pressure on from the outside for the defense. Had nowhere to throw the ball after that, so he had no choice but to throw it away. Yeah, Russ is up here. And again, and another. Snapped it over his head, and he's going to kick it out of bounds for a safety. And once again, that's back-to-back -back -back bad snaps there for the, the center. And we have a late flag in now. Let's see what the call is here. Yeah, you know, this is really the first time these guys have been on the field. I mean, they, they've had some, uh, you know, some workouts, some practices and stuff, but as far as in this situation. So you can have some of the first time uh, kind of mistakes here, early part of this deal, trying to figure some things out and guys having their first reps in this situation. They're gonna call an illegal kick on the offense. Marker trying to kick it out of bounds and they're gonna decline it and it's gonna be a safety. And once again, another and that was a, just a mental, uh, um, that was just some errors there between the center and quarterback for the, for the offense. There's Zach Marker. His pass incomplete, he was looking for number 31, Damian Magnuson. Damian Magnuson's incomplete. Ball incomplete, so they'll bring up Bilal Kone on ten. coverage. middle to number 28. Number 28, Miles Guyton. Tackle carry. Right now, we're playing scrimmage by Tony Carrier. Third down and 10 now after the no gain on the play. Here's Marker. Well, she got uh, twos against twos in there right now. Looks like we have a flag down. It looks like to be a false start. Play procedure against the offense. We have a five-yard mark off. It's 
So back up five yards, he'll make it third and 15. Yeah. Levi, they're gonna come to me real quick. Let's go down the sideline here for Casey Miner. Casey? Hey guys, uh, thanks for calling me down here. Uh, like I said, there are a bunch of scouts here today, uh, as this is the only scrimmage going on here in the in the Iowa Central, in the Iowa Central's conference uh, with Iowa Western Ellsworth not being able to play today. But we do see the third, the third here right now, Zach Marker uh, trying to elude some pressure and make some make something work here right now, uh, as the defense is looking really strong uh, for Iowa Central right here uh, in this in this game so far. They look really aggressive, and really tough, uh, making it hard for the running backs to get through the holes today. Back up to you guys in the booth. And a stop for the defense here, Troy. Yeah. Another stop there for the Triton defense. Uh, yeah, they've been dominating here in the last five or so series for the defense. Yeah, the defense has been dominating here late as the late the offense started out dominating the game at the beginning, but then ever oh, okay. since then it's been all defense. Yeah, they just kind of put it. Looks like we're gonna have the uh, more backups in here as in the game. We've got a new quarterback in here. We're gonna see freshman Kevin Collins, five nine hundred and ninety five pound freshman. Off to number 23, and on number 23, Alex Goley. Good field tackle there from 35, Garrett Olendeek there. A lot of these guys are, are true freshmen trying to make a, a name for themselves, trying to carve out a spot here uh, with this team and, and find themselves in the rotation uh, playing heavy snaps when we get into springtime. Yeah, that's uh, this is the time to do it, you know, especially in a game like this. As Alex Gully, another uh, good carry there, he'll have a first down. Alex Gully with a big run here, number 23. He's a guy who's a sophomore, Richard sophomore, five two hundred and ten pound running Again, another hand off to Gully. Gully don't get, doesn't get too much. There, he'll maybe have about four four yards on the on the carry. He's looking to try to jump cut on that one, and that hole was plugged up. Good job of sliding in there by uh, inside linebacker Dakari Randall, 5'11", 230-pound freshman, number 34, in there to plug that hole up. Awesome. 14, Kevin Connor. Pre-snap penalty, and I think it's going to be a false start on Big 79 there, the left tackle. And it is. Jonas Kelp. And when I say uh, Big 79, 6'6", 312 pounds, Jonas Kelp, true freshman too, by the way, uh, a guy that, you know, uh, they may, depending on what how things shake out, they've got a veteran offensive line here coming in the spring. And, uh, this is a guy in Kelp that they may end up red shirting and even putting some more weight on by the time uh, he sees the field. Yeah, you know, he is he has got a uh, lot very large body. Um, your quarterback now. Very large body can be a really uh, good player, you know, keeps developing. And we have an injury uh, down on the field, number number ninety four uh, Jonathan Massman. We got a man down for the defense here. Jonathan. Again, it looks like they're working to the cram out. We, we talked about yep. that. You know, it, it is a hot, humid day here, and these guys are kind of on the field in this situation at least for the first time. So uh, you have the, the propensity here for possibility of that. And, uh, you know, the guy's going to have to kind of get acclimated to it and, and get hydrated here. But that's something that I think you'll see throughout this afternoon uh, with uh, guys kind of being in the situation. And, you know, if you're a Midwestern football player, you're not in October, you're not used to this kind of, you know, warmth and this kind of humidity either. Uh, so it's a little different kind of deal for you. And he's going to come off the field under his own power here. It's Dakari Randall. So. Actually, no, I'm sorry, not Dakari Randall. Uh, jo Jonathan Mossman coming off the field there, defensive end. 
number 94. Number 14, Kevin Connor. Show and blitz here. Kevin, and they're going to throw another penalty. flag. Looks like another false start. Yep. Kevin Connor, lefty, pass incomplete. He was looking for number 17. Pass Kyle incomplete. Broken up by Gregory Mitchell. Down, so another turnover on downs Take for the break defense. Up, man, on that play by Mitchell. Able to get a lead on the ball. Another great stop as this offense continues to um, have get manhandled by this defense. Here we go, first and ten. Pat run up the middle. 20, Dalen Bodie. He maybe gets a few yards on the play. Second down and seven. Yeah, body with carry. Screenplay now. Complete to number 21, DJ Jones. And he takes a big shot out there on the sideline. DJ Jones. Section. Big hit by E.J. Perry. E.J. Perry with that big hit. Um, third down and two yards for the offense. Here's Connor again. Passes just over the head. He had a wide open guy, but just over the head. Was number 19 of Marion Bartlett in at quarterback, a six foot hundred. Marion Bartlett's pass incomplete. Here and like I said, intended for this, Dallas Bell. Pretty much every guy on the roster is healthy right now to, to play out in front of the coaching staff and try to you know impress them and kind of get comfortable and make his name here a little bit uh, to kind of put himself in a position to play in time in the spring. Yeah, indeed, um, Berlin hands it off once again. That was fourth down, and uh, oh, yeah, looks like he's just going to be short, and it'll be a looks like it'll be a turnover on downs. Yeah, Cody Smith with the tackle there for the defense. So again, once again, another uh, turnover on downs and another win there for the defense. now for the Triton offense. Isaac Michael is back into the game as he hands off the ball to number 20 to Dale and Body. Bring up second down and 10 after 
a lot, actually a loss of a yard on the play, second down and 11 on the play. Isaac Michaels runs out to the right, and he's just gonna chuck that one out of bounds. It'll bring up third down and 11. Good play over here on the sideline, uh, over here by number 18 yeah. on the defense with the pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's lucky he's he got bounds. it off the deflection. Uh, Akil Muhammad able to come down with it. He's happy about it over there. Yeah, on the Third down and 11 for the offense. And they're going to get called there for a false start. I believe it's the right guard. Tennessee leading Georgia at the half, 21-17. ISU up at the half, 21-7 on Texas Tech. Auburn up on Arkansas, 17-0 in the second quarter. Little game update there. Um, Isaac Mitchell, Michaels goes up the, down the middle and it is caught by Jordan Cumb. With the reception. Jordan comes showing that athleticism we talked about. You know, not the biggest guy out there, but the guy that can run and go up and get it, climb the ladder, and he's able to do it there. There's Michaels, he hands it off once again to Dalen Bodie. Somebody will be carried. Look, why are there Nats right now? It's like windy still. There's Michaels, he hands off the ball. Again, body. Another great run carry there. there. By Dalen Body, number 20. And a pretty good defensive play coming up from safety. Run defense there on the safety spot. You gotta like that out of Nick Bundy, the defensive back, number 19. They'll bring up third down and short for the offense. And Michaels over the middle. The pass is gonna be caught by Carson Pilsenbeck. Pilsenbeck. 84 Carson Hilson back. Six foot tight end, 220 pounds. And we'll find him over the middle there. We'll talk a little bit about that. There has been a little seam in the middle at times against this defense here. Today. I wonder how much they have to watch. How much the rest get paid to anything? Michael's under center, probably. First down and 10. Then I've got to assume NJCAA. Hands it off. And he is going to be dropped for a loss on the play. A loss of about. Three yards on the play. Carried. carried by Chase Wiedemann. And Wilson once again with the stop. Michael's in the gun. He's going to look to throw. He's going to be rushed out of the pocket. He's got a man wide open. And it's going to be caught for a touchdown. Number 88, Elijah Rosaro. Wide open and a great play there. Just wide open. Coverage. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody, uh, nobody between here and Webster City of Rosario. <laughs> yeah. and he's able to, to go in for six. And, but we do have a flag down on the play. And that touchdown now is going to come oh, all the way back. Oh, he's the field. The for receiver. Yep. And you know what can cause that sometimes, Clay, is if you misread on the call, if you're an offensive lineman and you misread on what the offensive line call is, or if the wrong call is made, the wrong audible is called in by, by the center, and you, uh, you, you're run blocking when you should be pass blocking, that's what can cause that. Hand out to Brandon Smith. 
Smith's going to be pushed out of bounds for a loss of about a yard. They'll bring up third down and long for the offense. Let's go down the sideline, get away from Casey Miners. Casey. Hey, Robin Clay. Uh, you saw the second. You saw the second and the first and second team. Excuse me, going there in the first part of the practice. But the third and fourth team is going right now, and uh, the third team defense kind of looked to get the get the edge up edge here. But right now, the offense getting a little going as they're moving down the field right behind me here. Uh, they're starting to get their momentum going here a little bit more as they didn't see in this first couple drives. Uh, let's hope to see if they can continue it here and punch it into the end zone for a touchdown. I'm backed up to you guys in the booth. See here, Clay. Uh, they kind of look to get out of the defense. Uh, as I mentioned, we've seen about every guy on the roster here, and I imagine that's what we're going to see. And we'll see what offense uh, comes out here at the end. It looks like Kevin Connor is going to come back from the ball game at quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, the offense um, had a little momentum going into that last drive, but once again, uh, you know, some penalties have cost them uh, that drive. You know, they had the wide open touchdown and then you know got called back but they were able to uh, capitalize uh, the next time down so um, you know see here um, if, uh, if the, uh, the offense here can make some good moves and try to um, get him another touchdown here sweet pass, sweet pass to number 28 uh, Miles Knight Miles Knight and that's going to go for a little gain on the play. Um, actually, no gain. Uh, it actually going to be a loss of a yard. Tackled by Owen Garrett Owen. Dyke. There's Connor. He's going to look to throw again. Just over the head and almost intercepted. His pass was intended for Nate Long. Pressure oh. that time by Deontay Bryant, 6'3 defensive lineman, a freshman, 230 okay. pounds there. Come on, baby. Number 43, he was in the face of Connor. It's coming right that from you. There's Kevin Connor. Showing off his wheels and he slides and he's going to be. Yeah, Michael. Michael just told me right at the close to the line. Real close to the line. And Connor. I'm saying Michael hasn't done anything. They're not going to give it to him. He'll make a four million inches. I'm saying I had to run Michael because like Michael came here so he can help. So he can help production basically. He can help production at least. Close to help production. He's not like flat. Swing pass, please. DJ Jones. DJ Jones. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, it looks like to be a well, you know, the timing in a game like this when you're on the field in this situation the first time. Missing the timing and uh, the synchronicity uh, as well can be an issue, and we've seen that a few times by the offensive line. Kevin Connors swing pass out to, uh, to DJ Jones and DJ Jones got some room on the on the right side and he's gonna have a first down for the offense. DJ a simple, Jones uh, showing a little speed, showing a, uh, an ability to make a big play here out of the backfield. Marking 
Okay, I'm gonna ride my claw. If he shows, if he shows up to the site, you can't help the rest of the news. I'm gonna ride him out. Probably hasn't done anything. Kevin Connor again. Year, under some shit. pressure. Gets away from it. He's sure able to them. complete the pass. Is he inbounds? That's a heck of a catch. By 81, Devon Knight. I'll say something. What do you have? That's quiet. Not down by Sean Yeager. There's Kevin Connor up the middle run. 28, Guyton. Oh, Guyton, good. Corey Randall. Corey Randall making the tackle there. We've called that name a few times at that inside linebacker position. There's Connors rolling to the left. He's got a man wide open. Touchdown. We get our strength from Kevin Connor there to make that throw. Where, you know, he's still on the run, never really had a chance to plant, and then to fling that ball into the corner there across his body. Might do it there for Highland. 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 You know, everybody looked a good in sync, and there's no doubt in my mind this is a top 10 preseason team and a team that can really push for the national championship. Yeah, and, and you know, going to have the benefit in the spring, too, of not having such a brutal schedule that they had last fall with all those teams in the Jayhawk Conference. Yep. The Jayhawk Conference is playing conference-only games because you're only allowed to play eight games. Well, I shouldn't say that. They're playing – plus one all yep. conference games plus one because you only can get eight well there's seven teams in that league where you can play seven conference games mm -hmm. eight total uh, teams in that league so that leaves you with just one out of conference so not really a partnership uh, there this year so Kevin Twain kudos to him to go out and be creative had to get creative in this situation and create a schedule uh, but it won't have It'll have quality teams on it. It just won't have that murderer's row, if you will, of what they had last year of the Hutchinsons and the Independents, uh, the schools out of Kansas. Uh, uh, what's the other one? The the one that's uh, – there's two or three of them out yeah. there. So many good ones, yeah, it's hard so to keep them all ones. straight. Uh, so, uh, you know, won't have to contend with that uh, as much uh, going on for uh, the 2021 season. Yeah, last year uh, 10 out of their 12 opponents were – ranked last year so a really brutal schedule and then you know maybe this year a little bit easier schedule because of the pandemic you know had to re uh, do this whole scheduling thing you know could try to find some new teams yep so you know it's going to be interesting to see you know this is a team that i feel like can really go and go to play conference push. teams twice yep. uh, in 2021 so you gotta like that because you're the defending conference champions you gotta feel pretty good about that deal yep, as well yeah, they're playing twice, you know, in one year, you know, you'll definitely earn the conference title if you were to win it this year. 
Yeah, you know, um, great day for football. You know, it was great to be out here today, you know, just to get an early look. You know, we were a little bummed in the spring. We were able to come out here and see them, but to have them here in the fall um, was just uh, great to see. Um, we'll hope to see you guys in late March. Uh, first game, uh, they'll play uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, right here at Dodger Stadium. Um, so I hope we all get to see you there. I've, I'm Clay Lenz. I'm Rob Jones. Um, we'll see you next time here on the Triton Nation Network.